I'm hearing uh, some accounts that maybe one in two black men may vote for Donald Trump, which if, if you know anything about the voting record of black Americans, they've had... 90% voting Democrat for a long time. It's just they've just expected that. So well, can you see that happening? Could you just see one in two black men well, voting Republican? One in two, one in two is high. But it's I can, high. But it's I the highest see, I've heard. Right. But mm -hmm. Right, but I can see one in four. And I'm going to tell you this. I mean, I've actually compiled this. Um, black men are actually sick of the Democrats and are voting for Trump for many reasons. Uh, one is a failure to produce reparations. California exposed Democrats' lies on reparations. When challenged by a California state Republican to put reparations to an actual vote on the floor, they folded because they never because Democrats never planned on doing reparations in the first place. It was a ruse to secure black votes, as I said on this program last year. Student loans also being in that same vein of a lie. Um, also, there's legal immigration. You know, at the time that Democrats are saying no to black people for reparations, black men are watching that the Democrats that we vote for are spending billions of our tax dollars putting illegals up in four and five star hotels in New York City at $500 a night. I mean, we're seeing videos of illegals stepping over homeless black Americans on the street to go into these hotels that the black American taxpayer is paying for. And American black men who have been complaining forever about police brutality and over policing are literally watching illegals get away with murder right in front of us on top of the fact that their presence here is a crime. So I say the Democrats had a choice between black men and illegals. They chose legal, so we're choosing Trump. Also, there's the LGBT agenda and school choice. I mean, no black man, white man, or any actual man is for the Democrats pushing LGBT and trans ideology on children. But one of the many ways that we get around this is school choice. But of course, Democrats aren't for that. Um, also, we're tired of pandering, fear tactics, and denial of agency, because black men, obviously, we are men. And like men, we are naturally hate being told what to do. So when I tell people that I support Trump, people say things like, oh, you hate yourself, you hate your mother, you're a coon, you want to be white, oh, the police kill you, Trump is going to give police uh, immunity to kill black men, which is also not true. But I mean, to that, I reply, what if I just like Trump's policies better? Like, what if I'm for lower taxes and the use of tariffs to set off our national debt? What if I'm for a mass deportation of illegal? as most black men are, and the abolishment of birthright citizenship, which most black men are for. Um, I'm also for Trump's drill baby drill energy exploration program. I'm for RFK's whole, you know, make America healthy again agenda to get rid of seed oils and carcinogens in our foods. I lean libertarian, so I'm all for um, Elon Musk and Ron Paul trimming the fat at our government agencies. And I like that Trump was the only president in the modern era not to start a new war. So why is it that I, as a black man, cannot make political decisions based on policy, logic, or my personal financial situation like everybody else does? Why is it that I, as a black man, have to base my entire political calculus on the possibility of me being pulled over and killed by a police officer when the when the president and the federal government don't even control the police? Police are funded by state and local municipalities. So when they say that Trump's going to give give police power and immunity to kill black people, that's a lie. Like, the immunity that Trump speaks of is police having immunity from frivolous civil lawsuits, not criminal charges. So Trump cannot and is not going to give police power to kill anyone. And when you look further at the cases of, like, George Floyd and Eric Garner and people like that, most of those tragedies happen in places where Democrat mayors and their appointed police commissioners are in control. There's not a Republican in sight. So I just feel like once the Democrats... Once I realize the Democrats' lies... I'm just sick of it. And I just feel like black men are just not valued by Democrats unless we are dead or in a dress. So it's like, unless you're George Floyd or Billy Porter, there's really nothing else left for any black men in between. So I've said all that to say that Democrats deserve every bit of the electoral ass whooping that they are going to get on Tuesday for all their lies and their years of neglect. And maybe in 2028, once Trump gets his last far off, they can come back, stop the lies, stop the fear pandering, stop with the police gonna kill you and the George Floyd stuff and talk to black men like you talk to everybody else about finances and taxes and things that actually matter. But again, for the black men that are coming over to Trump, I really don't see them going back because I always say, once a conservative black, he ain't never going back. <laughs> <laughs> Benji, just very quickly before we go, you mentioned a homecoming. Now, outsiders viewers know that you were the New York cab driver all those years ago when we first spoke. And uh, you left New York. You went uh, first. You moved uh, down to I think I remember it was uh, North or South Carolina. Florida. Then you moved further in, down to well, Florida. I was in Virginia for a while in Florida. Yeah, yeah. I moved south during COVID, like everybody else who had some sense did. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And now you're back in New York. Um, 
as a, as to go to the rally. So what was it like? What was the atmosphere like? You mentioned it was a homecoming for Donald Trump as well. Are New Yorkers themselves, is there any chance that we could see New York flipping to Donald Trump or will that remain solidly Democratic? What was the vibe for you uh, catching up with your old mates and so on? Well, I would say that New York has already had some flipping, not necessarily the city or the whole state, but uh, but some of the House seats in the suburbs have already flipped um, toward the Republicans. That's why the Republicans have the House right now. Um, there was a mayoral race in, 20, I mean, I'm sorry, the governor race in 2022, um, where the where the Republican, um, I forgot his name, his name is Casey, he's he from Long Island, he actually almost won against Kathy Hochul. He was like five points away from her, which is crazy um, in a state like New York. So even though the city probably Probably will never flip. Um, there are seats in the suburbs and people who are affected by, you know, the illegals and all the things that they've done to our fair New York. I mean, me and Trump's fair New York, they've taken our hometown and turned it into God knows what. But there are people in the suburbs who are affected and they're voting Republican. And that's why I mean, I had I actually had someone even tell me today they're actually running a lot of Kamala commercials in New York. So they're probably scared of her slipping. I don't see New York ever quite going for the Republican, but I do see those margins getting slimmer and slimmer and slimmer as years go on. So maybe in you know three or four election cycles, New York may be able to be flipped. Benji Irby, always great to chat to you. Thanks so much for coming on and sharing your thoughts with us. And uh, going to be a great day on Tuesday. Looking forward to it. Benji Irby there in New York.